Welcome to another video brought to you by Robolabs, FloatingCottonCandy.com, and CaramelPopcornEquipment.com. This is going to be a short video to discuss the Vortex Popping System, which is patented and is a function of all of the Robolabs Robopop popcorn poppers. What is a Vortex Popping System? Uh, it's easy to put into print, but uh, it doesn't tell you much uh, as a reader, a potential customer, or a client. Uh, so I'm going to go through a quick video here and explain exactly how the Vortex Robo Labs poppers are different than pretty much everything else on the market. The primary benefit to these poppers, I'll state right up front, is that you are using hot air instead of oil to pop your corn and doing it to an incredibly uh, precise level of production so that you not only eliminate oil, but you eliminate labor, which is why though they are not cheap, uh, the return on investment for these is, is pretty incredible when compared to traditional poppers that have to constantly be maintained, adding oil, adding popcorn, adding seasoning, and then having to, of course, uh, do that every two to three minutes. Um, it's very unusual, I would say, for an employee to manage more than one popper at a time in a traditional setting. Uh, by contrast, a Vortex popper um, can not only be managed by one employee, but it, it isn't even a, really a stretch to have one employee manage two, three, four, or five of these poppers simultaneously. Uh, there's really no upper limit. It just depends on the competence of the employee, but it's all possible because of the vortex popping technology, which in a sentence could be uh, explained as directionally controlled airflow, which creates a vortex inside of a heated chamber that is constantly modulated for both airflow and for the frequency or intensity of the air. Uh, it, it's easy to say vortex popping technology, but to actually produce it so that you get a consistent result is what makes these machines so spectacular. Anyone can heat a chamber and blow hot air through it, but if you remember the, uh, the popular consumer hot air poppers from, uh, I would say, the 1970s and or the early 80s, um, they didn't really have a good quality product, uh, which is why you don't hear much about them anymore. I'm, I'm sure they're made, manufactured, and some people love them. But uh, the microwave kind of replaced that, um, that technology because it, it wasn't modulated in any way, shape, or form so that you could get a quality product out of it. So I'm going to uh, pause the video and I'm going to show you what the heating chamber looks like from the back open. Then we're going to close it and show you how the seed is loaded and, and what the actual vortex looks like, um, which you can't see the air, but you can see how the popcorn behaves and reacts to it. Then I'll move you to the front of the machine so you can see it exiting the heating chamber in real time and how the sifter operates. And then finally give you just a, a peek under the hood at the electronics. Uh, I won't be explaining them in great detail because uh, I don't have it all memorized. And while I can follow through and do maintenance and understand the basic function of the parts, that's probably a bit more than you want to hear for, uh, for this type of video. So when we come back, we'll see inside what actually is a vortex popping chamber and how does it work. All right, here we are at the back side of a Robo Labs Robo popcorn machine, and behind door number one, which is actually the only door back here, I've just always wanted to say that, behind this uh, door is the actual vortex popping chamber, and so I'm going to open it up with the machine powered but not running. There are four locks, uh, two on each side. I've already released those so I don't have to stand in front of the video. And the first thing I'll show you is this uh, very large piece of metal. Uh, I want you to see that it is not simply flat. There's an obstacle here on purpose to uh, help agitate the corn as it pops. And uh, inside of the chamber, I will have to do a little bit of zooming in, so this might be uh, a little less than graceful, bear with me. But inside the chamber, you'll see a number of different baffles. Um, that's again to help the directional flow, and when the corn pops, you'll, you'll actually see how that works. But what I want to draw your attention to here at the bottom is a uh, chamber plate. This is where the air comes from. It looks sort of like it would rotate, but it's actually stationary. But all of these cuts are uh, directing air in the exact same uh, flow, and that is sort of the vortex nature of the airflow. Also inside this chamber is an optical sensor to count the uh, corn strikes or corn activity, so the machine knows exactly how much corn is in there. Uh, how aerial it is, and when the uh, chamber has been vacated, when to load new seed, or in continuous operation machines, uh, how to make sure that it doesn't overfeed the seed. Of course, there's also a temperature sensor, and this portion up here is a fine screen to catch particulates, and the popcorn is actually going to go up over the top of this barrier, which combined, 
if you'll notice the uh, the angle of this of this blocking plate combined with the angle of this plate is what allows you to create the vortex airflow keep the popcorn moving when it's in seed form but evacuate it from the chamber with a minimal amount of seed loss when the corn is actually popped so the back of the chamber is pretty easy to explain i'm going to put the back on lock it down and then um, let you see how it loads feeds and actually pops the corn all right i've powered on the machine and it will probably take uh, five or ten minutes to reach uh, the chamber temperature for popping at that point what now is completely empty i'll show you you'll see seed enter and start to move in the vortex pattern but right now what i want to point out is how that occurs walking around the back of the machine which is not usually the way you show it but i want you to see there's a very large corn hopper and this hopper is connected to an auger system and so once temperature is raised this auger will start to drag corn drop it down this feed tube and that enters directly into the chamber so i'll pause the video and come back when uh, when we're loading corn now that we're at operating speed you can see how the auger drags corn into the chamber and i'm sorry but this will uh, be a loud process it's not actually that loud in uh, operational life but uh, the video is probably going to pick up a ton of noise i don't know how well the focus is going to work either but you can probably see that there's now a swarm of angry popcorn kernels circling this vortex chamber the speed of the airflow has increased you can see that by the way the popcorn is now firmly pressed up against the side uh, those air channels in the middle are actually emitting hot air into a hot chamber and you're going to start to very quickly see popcorn being produced. It'll be sort of a blinding storm. So that is the vortex action at work. The advantage here is that as soon as the kernels are popped, they're directed up over this chamber, which pretty much eliminates the ability for seeds to get in there because of the way the chamber was organized that I showed you earlier this uh, pretty much guarantees that all of your seed stays inside of the heating chamber until it's popped and only then is it light enough to actually make it towards the uh, exit and the exit in this case is this turbine you can see popcorn flying from that large square in the back and then the sifter rotates and below the sifter of course is an orphan tray you just heard a second set of seeds come into loading as the first batch is being evacuated from the sister. You can uh, put buckets or bags or really any kind of container you want to collect it. These machines will make really a perfect product every time. Because they're not cooked in oil, they're lighter and fluffier and crunchier, not in the crisp sense, but in sort of a light light flavored crunch which is perfect not only for eating but for caramelization or further processing with uh, oils and seasonings let's not say you're going to serve the popcorn without any oil but the advantage is that you're popping without oil means it's very quick it's self-loading long as an operator occasionally fills the seed hopper at the top and remembers to wheel away the bag when it's full that's about that all that is required which is why i say your cost savings in using a vortex popper are twofold. One, oil, which is of course, as popcorn producers know, the most expensive component, but two, labor. Keeping the uh, seed hopper full and changing this bag from time to time, or you could put this in front of a conveyor belt or buckets or anything you like, that's not very challenging for any employee. So running three, four, or five, maybe even 10 of these side by side, uh, wouldn't really even be all that consuming for one employee as long as they were willing to pay attention to the process. On top of the huge cost savings, you also have the advantage that this can now be marketed as a much healthier product, even though you're going to obviously coat it with something, whether that's oil and seasoning, oil and salt, or caramelizing, there's a substantial amount of oil not being used and not being imparted into these kernels as they come out so right now you just have 100 percent popcorn there's no additional calories been added to this and that obviously creates a huge reduction in the calories and the fat content of the final product so i'm going to shut this machine down now and uh, we'll show you what the chamber looks like from the back in terms of uh, cleaning but before i go i'll also point out 
that below this machine, and every machine is designed a little different, but uh, here you've got a huge hopper tray for uh, orphans, widows, things of that nature. They all drop through this chamber. You can't see how that happens in here, but that's what, what you get from all the holes in the sifter. Once the machine has gone through its auto cool down process, uh, you can then uh, remove this back plate again, and I'll just show you what the entire cleanup is because it's uh, so simple. You'll have a few pieces of straggling corn from the last batch stuck inside of this triangle, and inside the actual popping compartment itself, you'll see uh, you've got one piece of corn and looks like less than a dozen kernels. You can remove those with your hand, or I use a handheld vac myself simply because sometimes picking up those little seeds off that, uh, that tray is a little difficult, especially if you've got fat fingers like I do. But uh, however you do it, you can see that uh, compared to cleanup of traditional equipment, um, this is absolutely nothing. Which is again why I say that one person could operate 10 machines and you're going to have a huge savings not just in oil but also in labor cost. Um, once in a while you'll probably have a little bit of uh, smoke or burn residue from a occasional kernel get stuck and you'll want to actually wipe down the inside. You do want to make sure that this uh, window doesn't get too dirty. That's where your halogen lamp is. Uh, but other than the occasional wipe down pretty much on a daily basis is just open up the back and uh, vacuum out or scoop out anything left in this tray and that's it. There's no greasy oil accumulated and, um, and there's no smoke process created from uh, popping in hot oil. So unless a kernel gets stuck and even then is a very very light residue. I probably wipe out this chamber once a month. Uh, a heavier user might do it once a week, but there's just there's just nothing to the machine in terms of of labor. This I'll actually uh, hold over a trash can and just dump it all in at once. Must be uh, 30 kernels in there, something of that nature. Other than that, there's really nothing to clean inside the front in the sifter either. You'll have a couple of stray kernels you can remove or just wait until the next day when you pop again and those will come out with that batch and uh, every machine while designed a little different there again will always be some sort of a orphan or widow tray that you can uh, lift out and just dump over a trash can and uh, that's all it takes to clean this machine so the last part of the vortex hot air popping system I'm going to show you is just a look at the electronics involved each machine will have slightly different configuration, but many components uh, in common, of course. And the only reason I'm actually showing you this is in order to create a perfect product every time, it requires an awful lot more than just hot air and popcorn. There's controllers in here for temperature fluctuations to adjust the air turbine, depending on the uh, stage of popping. There's controllers in here for various relays to feed the seed, to manage the seed level, to watch the temperature drop throughout every stage of popping. There's a uh, actual optical sensor that inside of the popping chamber itself, helps the machine determine how much corn is present, whether it's uh, overloaded and might jam. By jam, I mean overfill and stuff the uh, chamber and stop functioning. And then it also allows the machine to sense when uh, all of the popcorn has popped and the next batch can be started. Um, so it, it's a little bit more than, than again, the Hamilton Beach units from the 1970s. And uh, I just want to make that clear. Uh, not all hot air poppers are going to be created equal. That uh, idea of perfection every time takes an awful lot of engineering, which is really surprising when you think about the fact that you're just making popcorn. But to make it perfect and consistent, the same every time, uh, that's where the engineering know-how and electrical components come into play. So to wrap up the explanation of what actually Vortex popping technology is, it's higher popping without oil, but it's more than just hot air and popcorn. These poppers come with automatic feeding systems, with output sifters, with complicated electronics in order to keep the batch process operating correctly. You can control through your user interface the feed time, pop time, batch amount, uh, a number of variables to fine tune the popcorn for your particular environment and working conditions. Uh, and when you take the time to set it up properly and do some testing, you end up with a product that once you've salted and seasoned it or put caramelizing on it, uh, most people won't even realize that it's air popped. Uh, but I do want to emphasize that the Vortex popping technology is proprietary to Robolabs. And I thank you for watching this video brought to you by Robolabs. 
floatingcottoncandy.com and popcorncarmelequipment.com and I will make some model specific videos showing off the different poppers here in the very near future but uh, rather than cover the same concept of how the popping technology works in each video I thought it made sense to explain what's in common to all of the machines even though there are some substantial differences in both uh, production features and benefits so keep an eye out for the Robopop videos where I cover specific models more in depth. Thanks again and hope to see you next time.